In this video, I'm going to start to introduce the idea of trigonometry, which is a really, really important topic. Uh, you'll work with trigonometry a little bit at the end of Algebra 2. Uh, you'll work with trigonometry a ton in pre-cal. Talk to people in pre-cal, they'll tell you probably a third of the course is going to connect back to trigonometry in some way. So super, super, super important application that you're going to continue to work with in the future. Um, it's a topic that I really enjoy. It connects very closely to the right triangle problems we've been doing. Uh, you can make an argument that it's really everything that we've done this year kind of coming together in one topic. Um, on the surface, the to topic can be a little bit tough. I think it's a little bit tough just to look through a book and, and teach yourself the concept. Um, once you understand the patterns, though, it's relatively simple and it's very, very powerful. It's going to be able to be used in lots of different cases and lots of different applications. So really, really important that you put some time and focus and effort into getting this concept down. And again, it's one of my favorite topics in, in high school math. I, I love the problems. Uh, anything that <laughs> it basically results in problems that are relatively short and quick and yet very powerful, uh, that's, that's always something I can, I can buy into. Okay, so that's, that's where we're going to be kind of headed. Um, before we move on, though, I, I want to tell you a little story from when I was a kid that kind of illustrates uh, my experience with trig, and I think it will kind of illustrate why we're doing this as well. So I was about eight years old, and it was the middle of the summer, and my dad was mowing my grandmother's grass. And I was sitting around the house just messing around, and I got a phone call from my dad. And dad said, hey, I, I need you to get the calculator out of the desk drawer, and I need you to make a calculation for me. So I said, okay. So I got the calculator and he said, type in the number 70 and I want you to hit the button that says TAN, T-A-N, okay? And I did that and he said, okay, multiply that by 10. I did, I told him the number and he said, okay, thanks and, and hung up. And I was kind of mystified because, I, not shockingly to anybody, I was a super nerdy kid and a lot of times I would hit that sign button or that, uh, I actually, you might think of it as the SIN button, S-I-N, uh, or the button that says COS, C-O-S, or the button that said TAN. Uh, and I would put different numbers in it. I would hit that button, and I would just get these random decimals. And I could never figure out, I, you know, constantly was trying to figure out what were, what were those numbers? You know, why were those buttons on the calculator in the first place? And so, anyway, when Dad came home, I was like, hey, Dad, what, uh, what was that thing that you were asking me to do when you, when you called the house earlier today? And here's what Dad explained. He said, well, I was trying to cut down a tree at your grandma's house, and I didn't know how tall the tree was, and, you know, maybe the tree was kind of rotted or something, I'm, I'm not real sure, but anyway, the, the, he didn't know how tall it was. He couldn't just crawl into the top of the tree and, and uh, drop a tape measure down. So one of the things we're going to be able to use trigonometry for is finding measures of things that maybe we can't measure directly. Uh, it's a concept known as indirect measure. We use geometry things that we know to measure things that we can't measure. So here's what Dad had done. We would assume that the tree is perpendicular to the ground, and Dad measured a distance away from the tree. Maybe he was uh, 10 feet away from the tree, something like that. And he measured the angle to the top of the tree, okay? And the measure of the angle was 70 degrees. All right, so what we really have here is, uh, hopefully everybody sees we have a right triangle here. He wants to know the height of the tree, so he basically wants to know this side of the right triangle, all right? And this is where trigonometry comes into play. So we've already done a little bit of work with the relationship between angle measures and side lengths of triangles. Um, specifically, 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles. If, if this had been a 60 degree angle, you could do this problem, no, no issue, okay? But it's a 70 degree angle, and so the game changes a little bit here. So what Dad was really trying to do was he had a right triangle with a 70 degree angle. We don't know what the patterns are for a right triangle with a 70 degree angle. We didn't memorize those, okay? But there's a really important idea here that this is all based on. All right triangles with a 70 degree angle are similar to all other right triangles with 70 degree angles. Okay, because if you think about it, they'll all have a 70 degree angle, they'll all have a right angle. So if I make another right triangle with a 70 degree angle over here, this triangle is gonna be similar to that triangle, okay? All right triangles with 70 degree angles are similar, okay? Technically, they're all 20, 70, 90 triangles, okay? That would be a 20, a 70, and a 90. Now, we're not gonna memorize a bunch of patterns for a 20, 70, 90 triangle. 
We're not going to memorize a bunch of triangles, uh, patterns for a triangle with a 10 degree angle and an 80 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. Okay? We're not going to memorize a bunch of patterns for triangles with um, side lengths, uh, with angle measures of you know, 40, 50, and 90. Okay? 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles are so common, it was worth our time to memorize the patterns. But we can't just do that for every single angle measure and every single right triangle. Okay, so here's one approach, and I'm not saying this is how you should normally solve this problem. But based on what we currently know, this is about all you could do. Knowing that all right triangles with 70 degree angles are similar, you could make your own 70 degree angle and make a right triangle that's got a 70 degree angle. And so on paper, I did this before we got started, and I would have had you try this in class. Um, I made a little right triangle on paper that had a 70 degree angle, and this side length ended up being three. And I measured this side length, and it was about 8.24 inches long, okay? And so the big idea here is that if I know these two sides of a 20, 70, 90 triangle, it should be similar to this. I should be able to use various different relationships to figure out the height of this other triangle, okay? So one thing here, uh, if these two triangles are similar, Notice that a 70 degree angle is a pretty big angle, so this side's very long in comparison to that side. So I could find the ratio between the height and the base here, and the ratio between the height and the base over here should be the same, okay? So I took 8.24 and I divided by three, and that's about 2.75, okay? So what that's telling me is, if I have a right triangle with, this 90 with a 70 degree angle, the height should be about 2.75 times as tall as the base. Okay, and so we could use that idea here as well. We could multiply this by 2.75 and that would tell me the height, okay? This is basically what trigonometry is going to do. Your calculator will be storing the relationship between different sides in right triangles with different angle measures, okay? Instead of you having to memorize every single pattern for every single right triangle, your calculator will store the relationship. So here, we're storing the relationship between the long leg and the short leg um, and that ratio is always 2.75, uh, your calculator basically could store that value for you without you having to make your own triangle and figure out what the relationship is, okay? If we wanted to know the relationship between the height and the hypotenuse, the height and the hypotenuse, your calculator stores that information as well, okay? We'll look at that more down the road, but that's kind of where this is headed, okay? So for right now, you could solve the problem that way, or you could just do a straight proportion. Right? You could do a height over a base is equal to a height over a base, and you could solve that equation. And if you cross multiply and solve there, you're going to find out that x is approximately uh, 27.47 feet. Okay? Uh, in other words, the tree is about 2.75 times as tall as it is wide, and that's going to give us that overall height. Okay? Nothing that I've done here is trigonometry. Uh, but it's kind of the lead into trigonometry, the idea that we can use angle measures of right triangles to find missing sides of right triangles. So I encourage you to watch the future videos to learn how actual trig works now that we know a little bit about the types of problems we're going to be trying to solve.